Sean Haney here with realagriculture.com and I'm at the Advancing Women Conference in Toronto, Canada. And right now I'm joined by Syngenta's Chief Operating Officer, Deborah Pisk. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, first time on Real Agriculture. Good to have you here. <laughs> Welcome to Canada. Uh, Deborah, uh, you travel the globe um, as the Operations Officer with Syngenta. Um, diversity is very important. Obviously we're at the Advancing Women Conference. Diversity uh -huh. is very, very important. How does Syngenta manage, maintain, and, and really strive to make sure that it has a diverse workforce? Well, first of all, yes, diversity is really important. For, from our perspective, uh, we're an innovations company. Uh, having diversity within uh, our employee base and particularly in our leadership is critical to help drive innovation. We need mm -hmm. different ideas, different ways of approaching uh, problems. Um, but diversity in our industry, of course, is, uh, is somewhat challenged. We, we tend to have a, an industry that, particularly more so outside of Canada, I have to say, where uh, there's actually a quite strong representation of women amongst the agricultural workforce. But in other developed economies, it tends to be largely a, a male-oriented um, commercial leadership that we see across most organizations, not just, just in gender. So, Getting that rebalanced is not easy, but the sorts of things that we're doing are providing a supportive environment for, for women to develop their careers, providing mentoring programs, um, specialist workshops that, that give them the, the tools and the encouragement to develop their careers, as well as looking at things like flexible working um, policies that allow women to restart their career after they've started a family, for example. So a number of different approaches. Um, I think probably the most important one, though, is just making sure that the whole organization is attuned to the need to, to promote diversity in, right. in all of its different ways, whether it's gender diversity, whether it's, um, it's cultural ethnic diversity, even diversity of, uh, of thought and ideas is yeah. uh, it's critically important as well. Somebody said to me earlier today that uh, agriculture really has moved to a point where it feels like it's gender blind, where it's really about having the, the right person in the right role uh, so the company can achieve, achieve, achieve its objectives. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. I, I think we, um, we do need to make sure we're looking at, at individuals um, for what they contribute. Um, but I think the question of gender blindness, um, I think that's where hopefully we'll get to in the long term. In the, in the short term, we also need to recognize the different needs of, um, of women uh, in, the, in the workforce. And again, in Canada, um, some of those challenges are perhaps less pronounced than we have in, uh, in developing markets where cultural biases are still, are still very profound. So, for example, when when I look at, um, at markets such as Pakistan or Bangladesh, where we're trying to develop uh, a, a sales force that, that maybe is more representative of, uh, of our custom base, it's very difficult necessarily to get that accepted by local communities. Um, so within a, a global environment, there are some, some different challenges yeah. around the world. And so from your perspective, uh do you push through those boundaries or do you are you more do you take the approach of well that's that country that's the the sort of culture that they have or do you sort of push through that and do it the syngenta way no we have to do it the syngenta way but we have to do it in a way that uh, that understands the, the constraints and, and limitations uh, as well but uh, there's a lot that can be achieved just by creatively looking mm. at some of the challenges i'll give you an example from uh, from Bangladesh, um, so although um, as, a, as a Muslim society, the role of, of men is, is different from the role of women in, in commercial transactions, but actually the women have a lot of influence behind the scenes in influencing purchasing decisions because they typically have to, uh, for example, organize um, and feed the, the workers that come and work on the farms. Uh, and we found that by having dedicated women sales teams that worked on those influences rather than necessarily on uh, on the uh, the farmers who make the purchasing decisions, but the uh, their wives that are influencing them behind the scenes was a very effective business model for us. So still giving a prominent role to, to women in our organization, but adapting it to the realities of the marketplace in which they're working. 